In this video, we take a look at the structured query language. A common query language for all databases is the structured query language, or SQL SQL. Developed in the 1970s, this language allows for fast and efficient retrieval, deletion and manipulation of data held in relational databases using a simple set of commands. It is primarily a declarative language, meaning it expresses what needs to be achieved as opposed to procedural languages, which would express the logic of how something needs to be achieved. The full scope of SQL allows us to query data, manipulate data, define data and control data access. In the exam, you're expected to be familiar with the following SQL commands that we've listed on the screen. If any other aspects of SQL appear in the exam, they'll be introduced and explained within the question. Information in databases, as you know, is stored in records. Here is a simple Python program that opens a connection to a database and finds records within it. The important part is highlighted. This is where you will issue SQL commands to the database to find the data you want to output. Here, select population from the world table where the name equals Germany. In the following examples, commands you need to know for your exam are in bold red text. Additional commands we introduce purely, purely to further your understanding are in bold and black text. So let's start with selecting data. We're going to run the SQL statement, select population from world where name equals Albania. And you can see here what that will return is the value 2821977 down in the output box. We're saying select and then we're given the field name or the field name's population from the table, that's the world table, but only where the value in the name field equals Albania, and that's our criteria. Let's try another one. Select name, continent, area, population, GDP, and capital from world where name equals Algeria. So remember the select line is the list of fields. So we're gonna select all the different fields from the world table, but only if the contents of the name field outputs, um, outputs Algeria. So we can see the output line here is everything that was in yellow, Algeria, Africa, the area population, GDP, and the capital. Now, as we're selecting all the fields from the world table, we could also simplify the select line by using the star or asterisk wildcard. So this would be exactly the same as the SQL statement at the top of the screen. Select star, select all fields from the world table where the name field equals Algeria. Okay, let's try one a bit more complicated. Let's do select the name, continent, area, population, GDP, and capital field. Now remember that could be select star. From the world table, where the name is like, double quotes, a percent double quotes. So that's another wild card. We're saying look at the name field and if the name field starts with a capital A followed by anything. So this is only going to retrieve countries whose names start with the letter A, but we've then got an AND clause. So that's the first bit. Only select records where the country name starts with an A, but then from that subset, we also need to make sure what's in the population field is greater than a million. And both those clauses have to be true because it's a Boolean and for them to be selected. Finally, we're using an SQL command called order by. So it orders the output that's shown to the user in ascending order of the name field. Now order by is not listed in your specification, but it's handy to know. So if you study that SQL select statement carefully, look at the diagram we've got on the screen in the output window, 
you can see how the SQL statement runs. Okay, let's try one more. Select just the name and population this time from the world table where the name is like A% percent or the name is like B%. Percent. So this is literally going to return the name and population of every record from the world table, but only if the name of the country starts with letter A or the letter B. Again, we're using the percent wildcard there, and this time the Boolean expression or. Now we can also do what is called nested selection. So that's where we do a select within a select. So here we've got select name from world where population is greater than, open brackets, select population world, where name is Algeria, close brackets. So let's just take a look at that because it's not complicated once you get your head around it. Let's resolve the indented bracketed section first. So that's saying select population, okay, from the world table where name equals Algeria. Okay, well, when we run that select population for Algeria, we get 387 and then five zeros. That's the middle nested bit done. So, of course, now our outer select statement becomes select name from world where population is greater than 387 followed by five zeros. And the result is Argentina. So along with selecting data, you also need to know how to insert new records into a database table using SQL. The command here is insert into. We follow that by a table name and then a list of fields. On the next line, we then use the keyword values followed by a list of values. Now, when you list field values like this, strings must be enclosed in quotation marks. Now, it's also possible to omit the list of fields if you wish, but then you're going to make sure to supply all the appropriate values for a complete record in the correct order. So I'm going to pause this video and I want you to write an insert command following the format we've shown you above to add a new record to the world table. The only information we currently have is the name is Oz, the capital city is Emerald City and the population is a million citizens. Pause the video and unpause when you think you've done it. So what you should have ended up with was insert into world, open bracket, then the three fields we're inserting, close brackets, the values, and then we insert the matching values, separating them by commas and enclosing strings in quotes. You also need to know how to delete records from a database. So the keyword here is delete from, and then we specify the table that we are choosing. And then we specify some criteria. So delete from this table where, and then you specify some criteria where this field name matches this condition. Again, when listing field values, strings must be enclosed in quotation marks. So write a delete command that will remove all records from the world table if they have a population larger than 10 million. Unpause the video to check your answer. So you should have got delete from world where population is greater than 10 million. Simple as that. Now this next one is the update command and it's not explicitly mentioned by the exam board in the specification, which quite frankly is a little bizarre. They're teaching you how to select data, delete data and insert data, but they leave the fourth main one out, which is how to modify data. So we've included it here, but it's not strictly listed in your spec. You simply use the word update and then the table. And then we say set the following field name to the following value. And we can do that multiple times with commas. And again, we select a condition so we know which records we're updating. So good to go. For any country with the capital of Emerald City, write an update command to change their population to 2 million and their name to Wonderland. Unpause the video when you think you've got it. 
So you should have got update world set population equals 2 million comma name equals wonderland where the capital field equals Emerald City. And again, we've enclosed the strings in double quotes. So what about performing an SQL query on more than one table? Because as you're well aware, with relational databases, we typically have more than one table. Well, we use the keyword here, join. We say join table name, then the keyword on, and specify the fields in the two tables we want to join on using the syntax table name dot field equals table name dot field. Now join can be used, as we said, to combine data from two or more tables by specifying that common field that exists in the relationship between them. So here we've got select student dot surname tutor group dot tutor group from the student table. Then we need to join them together so we can query across both. So join tutor group on the student dot tutor group field and the tutor group tutor group field. So we're using that primary foreign key link to join the tables together. And then we finish our select just like we would before select from a table where but we're having to say student dot tutor group now because we've got more than one table. So I can't just say the field. I need to specify the table beforehand where student dot tutor group equals 10B in double quotes. And you can see the output to the user is at the bottom of the right of the screen. It's also possible via SQL to delete entire tables. Now, in database terms, we call this dropping. When you drop a table, it means you delete it. And it's dead simple. It's drop table followed by the table name. So the drop table command literally is used to delete existing tables. You need to be very careful when using this command as it literally will result in the complete loss of all information stored within that table. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How to use the main SQL keywords to create, return and delete data in a database? Well, there are all the SQL commands you need to know for the exam. As they said, any additional SQL commands will be explained in the exam paper. But you can do a lot more of SQL. And if you can spare an extra 60 seconds, we cover a couple of the things now. So as I said, SQL is far more powerful than just the commands we've shown you. Um, with SQL, you can define and actually create tables. So here we are creating a brand new table called employee. You can see we've got the fields on the left, their data types. You can see here three of those fields are not null. In other words, the database will force information to go into them. And you can even see that employee ID is our primary key. We can also use SQL to add a field, delete a field, or change the data type of a field. This is not the same as updating a table. That's when you want to change the particular contents of a field in a record. Here, we're actually altering the table. As you can see, we can add a brand new field, we can delete a field and change the data type, all with the alter command, very powerful. And also, we can set up several tables and link them together with foreign keys. So this idea of creating multiple tables and joining them together, creating that relationship. And you can see that here, we've got a slightly more complicated version of the create table command that I showed you a minute ago, but you can see we're specifying the foreign and primary keys. So there's a lot more that you can do with SQL.